what's the vital role of hashes in AI development and how are they transforming the industry? Sean Mullany, he's the CTO at Agolia, and he's here to share all these details and developments in AI. Welcome, Sean. Thank you very much for having me. It's great very to talk. Fun. You're welcome, and it's great to having you. Now, can you um, tell me more about why hashes are so important for, for making AI better and how are they making a big difference in the field? Yeah. Well, before we jump into hashes, we kind of need to take a little history um, about how search has been done for the last 20 years. So we started with um, using keywords. So anytime you go to Google or you go to your favorite e-commerce site, you kind of need to phrase the question that you want to ask or the things that you want to find um, based on the kind of keywords that may be contained in either the web page or in the product. So customers have been really trained about trying to choose the exact words so that they can match the different uh, web pages or products that they're looking for. And we've known that this kind of like word matching algorithm has not been um, has not been able to understand the concepts and the intents behind what customers are looking for. So for the last five or 10 years, we've had a lot of advancements turning keywords into vectors. And vectors are the way in which we can really understand the concepts behind these keywords and really provide much more intuitive human level understanding about what you're looking for. And these kind of vectors are the same things that are powering right now ChatGPT and the big explosion in all of the artificial intelligence products that people are getting so excited about. Now, the problem with vectors is, is that they're extremely large. Um, they're kind of like trying to map these keywords into this very big space. And um, it turns out that although they're really great at understanding humans, they're really hard to scale up to a large scale that you'd expect from a very big service like a Google or a very large e-commerce site. Um, they also happen to be very, very slow to be able to search through because you have to search through a very large space to be able to find the types of vectors that are matching each other. So this has been the problem. We've known that these vectors are going to improve uh, the way when we search for things, but we haven't yet figured out a way to scale them to the enterprise level, into these kind of production level systems with the same level of speed, the same cost, and the same scale that we expect from large services. So this is where hashes come in. Um, at Agolia, we operate at an enormous scale. We're the second largest search engine in the world behind Google. We serve search for 17,000 different websites. We have about 1.5 trillion queries every year. So whenever we have to solve something, we have to solve it at a significant scale and a very fast. So we've been working on a breakthrough to try to make vectors extremely scalable and fast. And it's by using a technique we call hashing. So hashing is a way that we compress these vectors um, and we get almost identical performance in terms of human understanding, but we compress them down into a size and a speed that's about 10 times less than normal vectors. So these hashes are very, very small compared to vectors. And it means that we can also search through a very, very large number of hashes very quickly, similar to the way a normal database searches for things. So this has really unlocked the use of human language and AI in a very um, large scale and an affordable cost. And you'll be seeing this coming to the internet, all your favorite websites, e-commerce sites, et cetera. So you spoke about vectors, about intent, and about hashes. So can you share Algolia's unique approach to, to using the hashes, but also to how this has led to advances in AI capabilities? Yeah. So our unique approach is about the trade-offs, really. Um, it's about trading off accuracy for speed and for cost and for scale. And because we're serving customers in the enterprise space and we're serving trillions of web requests, search requests, we really need to be able to um, do that at a cost and a speed, which customers are used to. Um, so the way that we use hashes is, is that we turn every single product or web page that's served inside of our index into a hash. And then we turn the request and the query that a customer puts into a hash. And we're able to search, take the query and search through all of the web pages, all of the products at a very high rate to be able to return really similar items that are matching not the words that they're using, but the concepts and the intent that they have behind them. And you were, um, let's say, addressing both the cost and the speed as key items. Now, exploring AI and, and hashes, what kind of challenges did Algolia face uh, with this type of tech? And how did you solve these type of challenges? Yeah, what I'm so excited about uh, working in a company like Algolia is, is that we have to actually do applied research. So there's been a ton of breakthroughs in the actual kind of research from a scientific perspective, 
and a lot of demonstrations about how this technology produces significantly better results and significantly better experiences for customers. But the hard, the hard part is really the applied research, figuring out how to take that breakthrough and apply it into an environment where there are trillions of requests, where you have to apply it at a certain cost, where latency, reliability, these are all core parts of a production engineering system. And customers really notice if a query takes an extra 50 to 100 milliseconds. Uh, our customers really care if it costs an extra you know, uh, cent or two cents per query. Um, and we need to be able to scale this up to customers who have hundreds of thousands, if not millions of products or web pages they need serving. So these are the type of real problems that you find with real world production applications that often you don't find when uh, the initial research, initial breakthroughs have happened. Yeah, and you did recently um, launch a new product, Neural Search. So how do hashes significantly help to enable this new tech, this new Neural Search and influence the future of AI driven search? Yeah, as I said, um, you know, recently with the breakthroughs in AI and natural language understanding that everyone has seen through ChatGPT uh, and through other AI applications using these kind of large language models, there's a real expectation for people to be understood when they're searching and for them not to have to kind of phrase their questions or phrase their experiences like they're talking to a computer. So when you go to a, um, let's say an e-commerce site today, the interaction can often feel very much like you're trying to tailor what you're giving the website. Uh, like there's a computer behind it, like it's a database. So you have filters that you have to click through. You have uh, queries and keywords that you have to be able to type in. And it feels very much like you're talking to a computer. I think in the future, um, with this AI technology, this hashing technology, it's going to feel far more natural, like you're able to talk to someone and they're able to guide you through the shopping experience, um, really understanding the concepts and the intents behind what you're looking for. Yeah, and user experience is, is key for conversions, is key for usability, and every end user wants a fluent user experience, of course. Thank you, Sean, for sharing this, yeah, I think, latest research and insights in using hashes in AI. I think it's an eye-opener for many people. And for the audience, thank you for watching, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome.